This is Mike Bot. Today I'm going to be doing three upgrades, actually four upgrades on my Bamboo P1P. The first upgrade I'm going to do is the complete hot end assembly, uh, which is a stainless steel 0.2 millimeter nozzle. And then I'm going to be doing the tool head upgrade, which uh, basically upgrades the cable on the back here to a heavy duty cable, attaching the chain link to it and upgrading the uh, extruder gear to a hardened steel extruder gear. Uh, not in that particular order. So most likely I will start with the hardened steel extruder, move on to the tool head, the chain assembly, and then the 0.2 millimeter stainless steel nozzle. And I'm changing that nozzle because I'm going to be doing a really nice, highly detailed print and I want it to be uh, as detailed as possible. So first things first, I need to start by unloading the filament. So go into your bamboo P1P screen, go down to feeding, in the settings and then click unload wait for it to do its thing unload that filament and then shut down the printer and start with the upgrades if you haven't done so yet check out my uh, bamboo p1p must have upgrades and parts and that'll show you these parts that i'm going to be doing so here's the hardened steel extruder gear So the filament should start unloading right now and the filament has been unloaded now I'm just gonna put that aside get it out of my way click done and then shut down the p1p Alexa turn off p1p there we go and just like that the p1p is off so now what I should have done before I shut it down I'll have to do it by hand now I need to bring forward the entire assembly here it's as high as I can get my camera so I'll try to position it accordingly all right so we'll start by disconnecting the front panel screen so let's just undo that just like that very easily and I'm probably going to be referencing parts of this video on the P1P versus M5 series so next I will grab the Allen key. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab the Allen key here and I'm gonna start by unscrewing the uh, nozzle here. So basically, to take out the nozzle, it's just these two screws right here, and then it pulls out and downwards. And I'm removing these now because I'm already gonna be doing the upgrade and I have a feeling that these need to get removed anyway. So this is my first time doing it, so that's basically going to show how easy this is supposed to be. Alright, so make sure you put your screws somewhere safe. And this should be somewhat hot still because I just... There we go. Okay, so to remove the entire hot end assembly, you just pull that out once the uh, screws are out and then it's just two little tabs here holding it so what I'll do is I'm gonna take a picture with my phone and reference it in this video to everyone and that's how easy it is to remove the entire hot end assembly and there's my 0.4 mil nozzle now to do the 0.2 just do the exact same thing uh, which I will show later in this video Okay, so the first thing we're tackling in this video is the hardened steel extruder gear. And this is going to basically now let me do more abrasive materials, uh, possibly even carbon fiber. So I'm going to start by removing the PTFE tubing up here because I know that's part of the process to upgrade this cable anyway and plus it'll make it easier to work with less things around the PTFE tube is out as simple as that and then I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need to turn the printer around so I can access the rear housing as well as this cable and the hardened gear Alright, so starting with the extruder gear, we need to remove the entire extruder. 
and replace that gear. I know the tool head's gonna be in the back here somewhere. It's good to take lots of reference pictures when you're doing this, so you know where everything goes afterwards. I'm gonna start, start by removing the extruder and see if I can replace the gear that way. So while I'm in here, I'm just gonna show everyone else as well how to remove the filament cutter. So this thing here is the filament cutter. So you loosen it by putting a hex key in there and unscrewing it. And I will take a picture as well so I can include this in the video. Cause I know the angle on this isn't the best right now. So I'll grab the one and a half hex and unscrew that here. And this is also, I, like I said, how you replace the filament cutter on both printers. So it just pops right out like that. You don't even need to take the screw all the way out. Uh, let me see if I can zoom that in. So there's the filament cutter right here. You just pull that out to replace it. So again, to put it back in, just push it in there and then you hold it while you're screwing it. But I'm not at that step yet. So there, now you know how to replace the filament cutter <laughs> in the process of this entire video. I'm trying to get the best angle for everyone here. So everyone can see what I'm doing. All right, so next, I will continue unscrewing the extruder gear. So one of the uh, extruder gear screws is behind the filament cutter. So take note of that. I'll take another picture for everyone now, actually, before I forget. You ever need to replace your extruder this is basically the same steps to do it as well i don't know how often they need to be replaced on the bamboo but it's somewhat easy it's very hands-on obviously but it's still easy when all things considered here is the p1p extruder so now we need to replace that yellow gear with the hardened one. All right, so I am gonna just re-angle the camera here. So I'm gonna just do this all on the build plate. So I was kind of just looking at it and it makes sense now. So in here, that's either alloy or stainless steel or something while this here is hardened steel. So basically we're gonna need to take apart the extruder here, the extruder housing. Here's the difference between hardened steel and normal. And I'm just gonna snap a picture of those. And then we also need to remove and replace this thing here with this one okay so it looks like I'm gonna have to remove this tension spring here now I just want to get a feel for how tight that is oh it's pretty tight on there so we'll just loosen the spring here hope this doesn't affect my prints too much you can see it kind of it's loose now actually a lot easier than it looks and only because I've been doing this on the uh, Ender 5 for so many years and it's been such a pain in the butt so I'm just gonna snap a picture of this and then I'm gonna post a little preview on my channel alrighty let's get that hard and steel one in here so whoop we just lost the spring I'm just gonna tighten this back on as tight as it'll go. That's as tight as it'll go. And now we'll put this one back in. There we go. That's the hardened gear. And then put the housing back on. Right. 
Now I'm not going to put that back in there yet uh, because I'm going to put these aside before I lose them. So these are the stainless steel ones. Uh, I'm not going to uh, put this on back yet because I still need to remove the tool head and I don't know how easy it's going to be. So um, I'm going to pause here, turn the printer around, then we'll take apart the back housing and get the, uh, uh, the tool head cable going next. All right, so the back housing has four screws. One, two, three, four. We're going to start by removing those screws and I'm going to snap a picture of those once again. So we're going to remove that back housing and then we're going to look for this cable. Uh, we're going to have to fish it through. So that means I'm going to have to remove my damn enclosure. Uh, fish it through and then we'll uh, add it onto the control board. So we'll just start by unscrewing the back housing here. Okay, so the four screws have been removed and now I'm just going to remove the housing here. I don't Okay, so press down at the top and the housing comes out. Uh, looks like we're going to need to go in a little bit further and remove the board here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that board and trace that cable until I find it. Getting closer. Oh, that was annoying. My battery ran out and my SD card was full. So now I got to finish what I was doing and of course I've misplaced my Allen key that I was using two seconds ago. Yeah, I'll finish removing the backing here. I'm willing to bet that that's the tool head cable. I'm gonna snap a picture here. Okay, so it looks like we got a couple cables to remove here. One, two. Get those out of the way. Okay, now the board. Hangs by a big screw. Oh, look at that. All the way in the back. Jesus. Yeah. What's this? I'm going to take a picture of that. So it's literally the last cable and it's the one in the back of the board. Okay. I'm going to grab my new cable. Where the heck is it? And here's the heavy duty cable. So I'm going to grab this one now. I'm going to have to hold the board so I don't drop it. So here's the little board that's in the back. And I'm not going to put it on the magnetic sheet. So now comes the thumb part. Pulling this out. So there's the old cable. And let's see the heavy duty one in comparison. So the heavy duty one feels a lot thicker. It's a lot more dense. So this is the part that goes in the circuit board. Okay, let me remove the old cable. And then we'll open up the uh, back of the P1P in a minute. Okay, so now I'm ready to go to the back of the board. But before I do that, I wanna run the new cable first. So I will get everything placed and then I wanna put the chain link on at the same time while I'm already doing this. At least they don't use cheap zip ties like the Creality printers. So I'm gonna undo my enclosure. Okay, here is the inside. So now, basically we need to come and trace the cable. I'm going to snap a picture in the back here just to see how it looks so I can place it back the exact same way. So what I'm going to do is trace this down. Okay, I found it. So now I'm going to take a picture down here and then I'm just going to unplug it and run the new one down there. And then uh, I'm going to figure out how the chain works. All right, so I've connected the cable into the control board. So now I'm gonna put everything back together and then proceed from there. All right, so I'm gonna get the back 
put back in. All right, the back is on now. Yeah, let's go ahead and put everything back together. So I'm gonna grab that control board. Start by connecting the cable back here. I'm pretty sure this only goes in one way. Pull that piece out of the way. Right here, it's very important you don't try to force every, anything. Let everything kind of go in naturally. So I actually need to undo this damn thing here because it's causing me a headache right now. I had a hell of a time getting this board back on. So basically the trick is because this cable is thicker, it's tougher. So there's actually little channels to route this cable in the back. And that's gonna save you an hour plus of frustration. So make sure you route it through the channels that are. So make sure you route it through the channels in the back before you screw the board on. Um, to be honest, I don't know if the board's even gonna turn back on. So now you just connect the two cables back on here. Uh, you wanna leave that thing hanging for now. What else do we need? I think that's it. So now we can go ahead and reinstall the uh, the uh, side panel to this thing. Hopefully everything is on there right. I don't want to ever have to open that ever again in my life. Backing. Put it there. Grab the screws. Oh, you know what? I should not screw that back on yet because I just thought about this. And I think the channel has to kind of, uh, uh, the cable chain has to kind of mount in there somehow, does it doesn't. Yes, it does. So good thing I stopped myself before I cause myself more unnecessary work. Okay, I'll leave that. Let's take that out again. Okay, so grab your chain. And you want to look for this piece here. So these are the pieces that came with it. So that's clearly the chain that goes on the cables. This probably goes here somewhere. So I'm going to start with the obvious one. All right, so take this piece here and connect it to the chain. And it's going to go on the end with the bumps. There's no instructions. And if there are, I must have accidentally thrown them out. Okay, so that should just kind of swing around like that. And then this piece is going to go the outside of the wings facing towards you. That's just gonna go here like that. And the cable, oh good, oh fuck me, okay. So basically what you want to do here, you want to take the tiny little piece at the end of the chain that you uh, connect and you want to put it on top of the extruder uh, tool head like so. So from here, once that's on, you connect the cable link on and then you want to feed it towards the back. So you got to play around with it a little bit and make sure the cable link is facing towards you. Uh, it's more of a you got to do it hands on to kind of get the feel for it kind of thing. So make sure you put that top notch on the top. Now I'm going to put the backing on. All right, before I lose complete track of everything, I'm going to get that extruder installed back in the front here before I completely forget how I did it. And then I will resume with the back because the back stuff is easier and doesn't really require much thinking. While putting this extruder in, See, I've already forgotten how this goes in. I think it was like that. Yeah. And then I believe it connected up here. Like that, yeah. There, okay, I'm just gonna screw that back in quickly before I completely lose my mind. I believe it was these three screws here. So that's how you 
basically upgrade the heavy duty tool head and hardened steel extruder. I still haven't even done the chain fully yet. It's a lot more work than I expected. But these are one-time upgrades and they're not general maintenances. So I don't think Bamboo, when they thought of this, they thought people would be doing these upgrades regularly. So it's not too bad for a one-time upgrade as long as everything turns back on properly and prints come out functional. Or well, I should say. Oh, I believe that last one went somewhere down here. All right, so this is the 0.4 mil nozzle. And as I started out this video saying, I am going to be replacing it with the 0.2 millimeter stainless steel nozzle. So uh, the Bamboo X1C and P1P differ greatly. So make sure you order the right one for your machine. So basically, because I got the full hot end assembly, it just basically pops in and the cables go back in. If you don't have the full hot end assembly, you don't get the sock or the fan or anything. So basically, if you're just replacing the nozzle, you just unscrew the fan and uh, just take off the sock here quickly. And then when you unscrew the fan, you will grab the uh, ceramic heater cable and the other cable, it's just a little tab here that you press. I'll just grab a clean nozzle to show everyone what I mean. So basically, so basically, we remove the sock here. So basically what you'll do if you're just replacing the nozzle is you'll take this clip off uh, and then you also get some thermal paste I believe uh, in the kit and you get one of these things as well so what you'll do is you'll uh, take that entire assembly stick it on here with a bit of paste and um, clip it in uh, I'll do a full video on that when the time comes but for now I'm just doing the full hot end assembly and yes it is a lot easier to replace the full hot end assembly. So basically what we'll be doing here, you'll be putting the nozzle back in like so and running these two cables and clipping them in the little clip here. So that clip goes just right here. The bigger cable goes at the bottom and the smaller cable goes just above it. I'm just gonna connect the cables in first actually, it'll be easier. So big cable is for the fan, small cable is for the heater, thermistor and all that. And then if you wanna be extra clean, put them in the cables in the little notch here just to keep everything organized these cables are kind of fragile so try not to play with them too much okay now I will grab the two big screws screw that back on so I broke one of my rules with 3d printing and that rule is not to make too many big changes in one shot and I think I grabbed the wrong screws here no nope, they're the right ones I usually like to do one change at a time use the printer oh shit I usually like to do one change at a time uh, test the printer and then do another one so if in case I didn't film it right Big cable at the bottom, which is for the fan, small cable for the thermistor cable and all that that goes on the top. Run them into this little black notch here behind there. And that notch is plastic, so be careful. I actually uh, already broke one of the notches in the back where the tool head cable goes. That's how cheap it is because it's made out of plastic. 
I don't know why you'd create a really nice printer and then cheap out on little tiny things like that. I'm sure in the bigger picture it saves them a couple thousand bucks, but that's after they sell, what, a million printers? Not really worth the savings. I pay for a Ferrari, I want Ferrari. Simple. All right, move that out of the way. That's next on the list to attack. I'm gonna grab the faceplate, wherever that's gone. Uh, all over the place. Okay, faceplate connects in the only available slot. It's just a magnet. There. Now to continue the uh, chain assembly installation. All right, so since I'm already here, I'm just going to uh, install this thing right now. Move the chain out of the way. Just get that out of the way. I might have to, unfortunately, uh, lose some of my uh, carbon fiber pegboard enclosure. So you want to take that piece and you want to press it into the sides and the back until it's firmly in there. Then you want to take the end of the chain link cable and press it into the back of that piece. Make sure you route your cables through it as well. I'm just going to cut this thing. You don't really need it anymore at this point. Just careful not to cut the heavy duty cable when you're doing this. There, and get rid of this thing. There we go. Chain assembly. Good. Now what I'm gonna do, I don't like how this thing is sticking out here. I just want to clean it. And that's that part. All right, so next, um, I'm gonna have to turn it around because I still have to finish putting the enclosure together as well as the spool holder. I'm just gonna get the spool holder out of the way. Okay, so I am not going to connect this piece yet for a reason. So with the uh, P1P, you're basically replicating uh, the same thing as the X1C, meaning that uh, the process for filament is going to be closer to the X1C style. So this piece here is going to slip in here like that. So now your filament's going to get fed from the inside and then come out on this end. So just like the X1C, you are now going to have this piece here on the inside. So just want to make sure everything looks good here. So you want to grab this piece here. And hmm, it's going to be interesting. Okay, so I'm going to feed it an opposite way actually. All right, so but looking at it back here, uh, the setup's going to be a little bit strange. So while we are back here, we're going to need to lock this into place. It's moving around a lot, and I just noticed there's two little screw holes here, and it came with two tiny screws. So that needs to lock in the chain link. Now that's locked in, much, much better. Next, I need to figure out how to kind of run this without the bend. So I think the best way to do this is I may need to cut this. Okay, so with the way this is gonna work now, uh, it's gonna be a little bit different than uh, it was set up before with the P1P. So go ahead and screw this back on. So we want to leave about 15 millimeters here. Okay, so that's about 15 millimeters. And then with this piece here, just do what we did before. Drop that all the way and that's to lock it in so you don't get too much uh, shifting. That's so let me just double check that we locked in the 15 millimeters. So there's 15. 
16 on the dot. So now I'm just gonna lock it in with a little blue clip here. And then when we feed our filament through, it'll be nice and clean. All right. And that's basically it. So now, it's time to turn the printer on and test. So while I'm back here, I might as well just feed this through. I'm gonna be using some PLA math because I am printing a dinosaur in two mil, with a two mil nozzle. It's uh, an STL Flix uh, T-Rex statue and it's uh, really highly detailed. through until I hit resistance, perfect. I'll grab the plug, do it now so it's easier. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if uh, everything worked out and we have no errors. I'm, <laughs> I'm nervous. Alexa, turn on P1P. All right, so I'm just heating up the nozzle here and then I'm gonna do a filament change or uh, sorry, a filament load. I'm just gonna try loading some filament up again. It's a bit of a burning smell. I noticed the fan wasn't spinning, so I had to stop that last feed and turn the fan on and make sure everything is good. So that's basically it for this video. So this video was basically my experience, uh, basically upgrading the uh, heavy duty tool head cable, the chain assembly, 0.02 millimeter nozzle, the hardened steel extruder. And as you can see here, I'm just showing you the test that's proving that the extruder is extruding. This is a members only video. So if you are watching this, it means you're a member. Congratulations. Thank you very much for joining. It's appreciated. Thank you so much. Uh, and if you're not seeing this video, then you're not hearing this and you don't know what's going on. So once again, this is an exclusive video and this is my personal experience on doing all those upgrades and installations, uh, specifically the hardened steel extruder gear, heavy duty tool head and chain assembly. The 0.02 millimeter nozzle, I will be doing a video that's public to everyone. Stay tuned at the end of this video to see my first 0.02 millimeter print. This is a really nice print and you really want to check out these pictures. So once again, I'm just showing everybody here that the extruder is working and that's basically it. Thank you all for watching today. And uh, I assume you've already subscribed if you're watching this. And if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks, Thanks again, again. Mike Bot.